mini dread am i doing this right what the hell is mini dread <laughs> Anyways, welcome. Another mids watch. This one, typical field report. A guy comes in, asks one question, completely clueless, gets hassle handed to him, and then deletes his account, leaves. It's an old seven year one, but it's kind of a nice process. This was kind of, and you've probably heard me before talk about how Jack Ten of Hearts, one of the more prolific posters on here, kind of put together a good concept of the scoreboard and dread and this is one of the earlier ones that kind of it come from so you're going to see how how an idea went from just like oh a field report here a field report there all the way up to like uh, a manufactured theory something you can wrap a pill around wrap the red pill around right so according to op past sunday going for a kiss met with a peck on the cheek then another one finally i paused for something more made the move and then she forced just the peck on the cheek and i left we had an easter brunch where I was as sociable as I typically am. Afterwards, I had to return a table to a friend's house, went to Lowe's, priced some lumber. I didn't tell her about it, I just went. I got back after she sent a text along the lines of, I don't know what's up with you, and just ignored it. I got home, I got changed, went to her parents' house. I acted normal, sociable as normal, we had dinner, we went home. She attempted to tell me something was being aloof and suspicious, and I agreed and amplified that. I'm like, so I'm a private investigator who doesn't care? It's like, she laughed a bit, then later on at home, maintained dread, to which this point simply involved no interacting with her outside of necessity. I responded and conversed with her as if she started something, but I never went out of my way to talk to her or touch her or anything. Tried for another kiss, peck, peck, I paused, she pecked, fine. Don't want to kiss me like a married adult? Dread on. Don't do that, by the way. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't want to give, like, he's just going off about his day, but we'll skip to the, we'll skip to the important parts. It's basically the same thing, though. Like, he goes for affection. He doesn't get affection. He gets rebuffed. And then he does some, like, butthurt stuff. Then he goes off and does this thing. Then she starts, you know, probing him. And then he replies with very standard red pill tools. Agree, amplify, amuse, mastery, fogging. You get it. So to end it off here, he's like, I texted hello as a whale ba as a way back to dial that tiny bit of dread back, like finding the right simmer level for a boil. I got to pepper those in here and there. And this is all from shitty kisses. She knows how I want to be kissed by my wife, but she continues to peck me on the cheek. Fine. I keep trying to kiss her. If I'm met with pecks, the dread continues. Even if I have sex tonight, it'll be three nights past tonight. I'll still keep the dread on until I get the kisses I expect. I've made my expectations to her clear in the past. I want to be kissed by a, a, my wife in a way that's different than I kiss my daughters. You kiss me like you kiss them. I'm your damn husband. So seriously, I mean, it's more bitching about it, whatever. So I know that Dread is supposed to instill a conditioned response, basically, and I want to make sure that she does the, make the connection between kisses, pecking, and backing away. So am I doing this right? I will tell you guys right now, if at the end of a field report, you ask that question, am I doing this right? The answer is no. You're a soft art artist and you're wasting everybody's time. That is the last thing you should be thinking. Like this, and I'm going to get into the, the, the Jack response in a second, but this is wrong on so many levels. One, it's reactive. He's basing his dread on whether she kisses him on the cheek, like a, like a single event. There's actually a pretty famous field report, which I love. Where I, I'll talk about it someday. The golden picture frame where a guy was. puffing his chest and stomping his feet because his girl wouldn't even have his picture up with him and his wife in front of the family and she gave him like this very pyrrhic victory of like a, a golden picture frame finally even though her deadbeat brother was in and he took it as he was running victory laps when it was basically like the least amount of attention and validation the wife could give him and he thought it was the greatest thing ever meanwhile he was missing the forest for trees which is a healthy sex life but this guy, he's drawing it reactives. Like, if I do this, then she'll do this. If I do this, she'll do this. It's very overtly manipulative. Now, you've probably got me on uh, on record as saying oftentimes manipulation is just a normal facet of life. You have to be ready for it. Babies crying is a manipulation. Girls crying is a manipulation. Dogs barking is a manipulation. It actually gets your like limbic system going when you hear the idea of a girl screaming. But that's covert. It has to be 
Like it can't be ham-fisted like that. It's like shoveling your driveway. Good manipulation doesn't seem like manipulation. And all this is, and this is where Jack gets into it, it's not about training your wife to be affectionate the way you want. That's just a negotiation. That's, that's why the manipulation is bad, because it's a desire negotiation. Instead, it's a way of just establishing what you will and won't put up with. Your boundaries, essentially. And that's what he's missing. So I'll get to Jack's part here. He's like, no, that's wrong. Dread is not supposed to be operant conditioning. The sole purpose of dread is to prevent your wife from taking you for granted. That's it. I should say sexually here, by the way. Jack didn't put that in, but it's a very key part because reasons I'll get into later. Uh, based on this post and your others, I don't think your wife has a problem with this. Does she try to override or sabotage your leadership in the household? Does she insult you in private, belittle you in public? Does she have absurd expectations? Does she weaponize sex and invent excuses? Say she's never in the mood? The easiest way to put a stop to those things is dread. You don't have this problem though. Your problem is you're married to a wife who seems closed off sexually and physically in general. You want a wife that will make you feel like a million bucks. Someone that will see you back from the gym, massage your bicep and say the kids won't be home in 10 minutes and they want you bad, let's get a quickie. You want basically somebody who acts like she really appreciates and enjoys the physical connection she has with you. Unfortunately, dread can't make that happen. And it definitely can't make it happen the way you're doing it now, which is not even dread, but really, really badly enforced, stupid, covert contracts. You didn't kiss me, so I'm going to use the three periods in my text that sound curt. Ha! Way to go, champ. You showed her. So Janak is like, I'm base. I'm laughing at you, man. Like, how do you consider yourself fortunate? that your wife is emotionally perceptive enough to pick up on anything you're doing. If I acted this way with my wife, she wouldn't ask me what's your deal. Pretty sure this passive aggressive shit would just fly right over her head. I'm meeting up with a Spartan training group this week. Oh, that's nice. I should ask Alice to come over that night. Then we've been meaning to get together for a while. Exactly. Damn it, woman. That's not how you're supposed to react. You're supposed to get double the periods of my text tomorrow. Seriously though, if you have your wife's respect and appreciation and love, then that's really as far as dread takes you. And based on this post and the others, you're in a much better position than most of the guys here. Whatever respect and appreciation you're not getting will be resolved as you gradually increase your SMV and pursue and accomplish your map. The passive background dread generated by that should be a way to ensure your wife never takes you for granted. You don't need to play passive aggressive games on top of that. So now your problem is you want your wife to express her love differently than she does, and that's a different problem and in my opinion, is beyond the scope of what any prescriptive red pill advice can give you. Red pill can stop your wife from giving you shit. She can inspire you to do things like have sex more often, if only to avoid losing you. But you can't turn her into a physically attuned sex kitten whose raging libido means she can't keep her hands off you, which is really what you want. Now, I suspect this stems from a lack of confidence and your private posts, you outline clearly that she hates her body. At this point, your wife just sees her body as a pure utility. It gets her around, feeds the babies. She's not against letting you use it as a receptacle for your dick a couple times a week. But the idea that your wife's body is actually aesthetically pleasing is probably a foreign thing to her. And unfortunately, this kind of thing compounds itself. I know it did with my wife. She stopped wearing makeup to save time in the morning and then kept complaining that I look like shit. She stopped buying nice outfits and shoes because looking good in public seems to hardly matter. She basically saw her wardrobe as an exercise in finding whatever outfits would hide what a fucking fat ass I am. Those were literal quotes, by the way. She gave up on looking good and feeling confident with herself, so what chance did I have that she'd care to look good or confident with me? So the way Jack solved it... Learn it so you can forget it and start enjoying it. And he did it. He says, I did it in a way most of you guys would consider beta. The gist of it was this. I signed her up for a personal trainer. It's awesome old school guy. Then she got some surgery done. Nothing like a boob job. Just some birthmarks near her midsection where they weren't bad. They wouldn't be big, but they could be now they could be hidden by anything bigger than a thong. Pregnancy delivery stretched out the skin, made them pretty unsightly. And then I said we had way too much crap on our house, had a yard sale, and in the process made her throw out all of her old frumpy clothes. Oh, you've got nothing to wear? Good. Go meet your friends, buy some new shit. If you don't think it looks sexy enough, you have to return it. Is it beta? Yes. But whatever. Having the personal trainer appointments helped us plan and structure our week. I fought with medical insurance for the surgery because something could, could probably turn into cancer or whatever. 
Uh, the captain saw some problems, and he solved it. Do the red pillars disapprove? Well, I got a sexy wife who loves getting me turned on and fucking me, so I don't really give a shit. Sharing all this not to brag, but to point out prescriptive red pills limitations and how you may benefit if you stop asking yourself, am I doing this right? And instead, figure out the problem. And solve it. And feel free to post your thoughts of progress, but keep in mind, nobody is going to be better equipped at solving your problems than you. Getting to the point of this, I think a lot of guys think that red pill is the keystone. It's the, uh, what's the word for it? I can't remember the word right now. My, uh, where it like solves everything. But here's the point. It doesn't. It's made for a specific thing. It's about guy. It's about getting laid. Sexual dynamics. Yes, you will see um, it has spillover effects into job negotiations or being respected more at work and all that other kind of stuff. And maybe you'll be better understanding of politics or you want to come back to the second coming of Christ, whatever. That's outside of this. If it benefits you, that's great. It's still not here. And again, this is the problem a lot of guys have. So he's got the sexual thing down. He's getting sex from the wife. He's attractive. He's not unattractive with the exception of the passive aggressive stuff. But then, and this was right around the time that like dread was the, the biggest, newest thing in the red pill. So everybody was like, what can I do for dread for everything? And it was like, you know, she spilled the milk this morning. All right, time to get dread on. And, all, and then guys started to realize like, no, it's specifically for a dead bedroom to learn to stop being taken for granted. Replace her. I always refer to it as a, it's a monkey branch. If you don't know, that's a term from like the old MGTOWs where uh, a monkey doesn't leave the one branch till he has another one. And then I'd say it's an olive branch. So, you know, if that girl gets her act together, you stick around, whatever. Jack says it's about not being taken for granted. Both are right. Nothing is wrong. It just depends how you look at it. But once you stop worrying about, am I following some kind of like He-Man, Woman Haters Club, red pilled way of doing things? If you start looking at it thinking, hey, is this the alpha male way of doing it? Like, if you want to go try it, I guarantee you a pair of, you know, a cigar, a pair of glasses and a Ferrari aren't going to solve all your problems. I don't care who tells you otherwise. Be like me. It works for me until it doesn't. But then you won't be online bragging about it, selling you Gumroad courses. So whatever. But yeah, the takeaway from this, and this is kind of like saying Red Pill doesn't handle these problems, but it, it is. You are in a position now where your wife respects your judgment. She defers to your leadership. She sees you as a sexual being. Those are all the fundamental things that Red Pill gets out of the way. But then once that's done, you have a whole life of problems to solve and it becomes much easier. Like right here, wife was gaining weight. Wife had horrible clothes. Wife never took care of himself. Signs her up for the gym, throws out all of her clothes, tells her to go buy some new ones. And if it's not sexy, she's got to go return those. That doesn't work if she's not attracted to you. If she's not attracted to you, you get a blast of shit. You're too controlling, can't stand you, blah, 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 whatever. But once you got the attraction stuff in place, and that's the purpose of Tread and purpose of Red Pill in general, then these things become easy. And it turns out all of that stupid advice that you keep hearing people say, like, I tried buying her flowers and she still won't fuck me. What's up with that? And you're like, well, get the Dread shit out of the way first. And then you're going to start to notice that the end of a flower is a blowjob. Welcome. So... Hope you enjoyed it. And again, remember, red pill is not the be all and end all path for your life. It's a stepping stone to that better life. And then once you got the skills in place, you should never have to look back on them again. Unless she stops fucking you, in which case I got nothing for you. But that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.